This is the second video for section 1.5, Algorithms for Solving Graph Problems. In this lecture, I'll talk about the sorted edges algorithm. So we've already talked about an algorithm called the nearest neighbor algorithm. And this algorithm was based on a heuristic. And that word heuristic just means a common sense idea. And the idea was that at each vertex, we're going to travel to the nearest vertex that we haven't visited yet. Seemed very reasonable. And as we saw, it was pretty easy to use. So today we're going to be talking about the sorted edges algorithm. Same basic idea to use a common sense idea to try to get a good solution to our Hamiltonian circuit problem, even if maybe it's not the best solution. And this time, the common sense idea is to use the cheapest edges we can. We're going to make a list of edges sorted in order from cheapest to most expensive, and then we're going to try to use the cheapest edges we can to construct our circuit. So in this example, we've got a graph that shows the number of minutes it takes to travel between five locations, A, B, C, D, and E. And we want to use the sorted edges algorithm to find a low cost Hamiltonian circuit. So let's see how this is going to work. The first step is to make a sorted list of edges. So we're going to list the edges in order from lowest to uh, lowest cost to highest cost. So the graph has a lot of numbers on it. So we're just going to try to be methodical and look at all those numbers and try to find the lowest number on the list. And what we see here is we've got a five. So the cheapest edge is from C to D and that costs five. So we'll check that off and keep going. What's the next lowest number? No, well, we see a seven here. So from B to E, that costs seven. That's my next cheapest edge. And I'm crossing them out here just so that I don't accidentally use the same number twice. It makes it easier to find the cheapest number. So next up is an eight from A to B and so on. Next up is I've got a 10 here from A to E. After that, I've got an 11 here from B to D. Next lowest number is the 12 from B to C. Next, I see a 13 from C to E. Then there's a 14 from D to E. Then there's a 15 from A to D. And then finally, there's a 16 from A to C. Now, if as you're going through this, you have two edges that are the same number, you just put them both uh, uh, in some order on the list. It actually doesn't really matter which order you put them in if you do have a tie. In this case, we didn't have any ties. OK, so here's my list in order from lowest cost to highest cost. And now what we're going to do is add edges to our circuit one at a time from the least expensive to the most expensive. So our cheapest edge is from C to D. So that's going to be the first edge that we add as part of our circuit. So that's going to be an edge that we use. And I'm just going to put a little check mark here again, just to keep us keeping track of which edges we used and which edges we haven't used yet. Next up is the edge from B to E, which costs seven. So I'm also going to add that onto my circuit. Notice that that edge isn't connected to the edge that I already have, but that's okay. Eventually I'm going to have constructed a Hamiltonian circuit. All right, next up is my edge from A to B. That costs eight, so I'm gonna add that onto my circuit. All right, next I have the edge from A to E. Now let's think about that for a second. I'm gonna shade it in here in orange, just for us to kind of see what's gonna happen here. Is that going to be something that we can use as part of our Hamiltonian circuit? Well, not really, because that's going to give us a circuit that only involves the vertices A, B, and E. And remember, for a Hamiltonian circuit, the thing that we're looking for, we want a circuit that visits every vertex before returning back to its starting point. So we actually can't use that edge from A to E, even though it's the next cheapest edge, it's the next one on our list, it's not going to be a valid choice for us to use. So we're not going to use that one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put an X next to that edge from A to E. Again, just to keep track of which edges I've used and which edges I haven't. Next up is the edge from B to D. And again, we're going to run into a problem. So if I think about maybe trying to use that edge from B to D, what's going to happen there? Well, notice that at vertex B, what I now have, if I use that new orange edge, what I now have is three edges that all meet at B. But if you think about the Hamiltonian circuits that we've talked about, we never have three edges that all meet at the, at the same vertex. Because remember, we're only visiting each vertex once before we move on to the next vertex. So we're never going to have three edges that all meet at the same vertex, because at some point along this circuit, we're going to visit vertex B, and then we're going to leave, and then we're never going to come back, which means we're only ever going to have two edges, not three. 
And so that means that, again, we can't use this edge. Even though it's the next cheapest edge in our order, we're going to have to cross it out. So as we go through this, what you're noticing is that we started out being able to use the cheapest edges, but after a while we run into a problem where some of the edges are unable to be used. So what's next? The edge from B to C. Again, same problem, because if we try to use this edge from B to C, that's going to give us three edges that meet at B. We can't have that, so we're going to cross that out as well. All right, next up is C to E. Well, that edge doesn't give us a problem. It doesn't give us a circuit that doesn't include all of the vertices, and it also doesn't give us three edges all meeting at the same vertex, so that one's okay, so we're good. What about the edge from D to E? Same kind of problems we've already seen. If I try to use this edge from D to E, I've got a couple different problems. I have three edges that all meet at E. We know we can't do that. I've also got a circuit that only includes C, D, and E, and we can't have that either. So for a couple different reasons, we can't use that edge, so we put an X there. Finally, we have the edge from A to D, and I can include that. Again, no issues there. And now, actually, I'm done. I have a Hamiltonian circuit because I've got a circuit that includes all of the vertices and doesn't visit any vertex more than once. And so notice that I never actually got to think about this last vertex from A to C. I finished my problem before I got to that point on my list, and that's okay. So that's the result of using our uh, sorted edges algorithm. So again, as we added our edges to our circuit, let's think about the two problems that we encountered. We don't want to use any edge that would either give us three edges at one vertex or would create a circuit that doesn't include all the vertices. So those are the things you have to watch out for as you go through this process of using the edges in order. So when we interpret our solution, notice that when I first stated the problem, I didn't give you a specific starting point. I didn't say, okay, start at A or start at C or anything like that. I just said, here's a graph, find a Hamiltonian circuit. So, and, and nowhere in our list of edges did we need to think about the starting point. So if we did have a starting point, we basically just ignore that starting point until we're done with the sorted edges algorithm, and then we just tack on the starting point. So for example, in this case, if I happen to know that my starting point was, let's say, D, now once I'm done making my circuit, I say, okay, start at D, and now there's two ways that I can interpret my result. I can say that my circuit is to go from D to A, going this way, and then from A to B, and then from B to E, and then from E to C, and then from C back to D. Or I can do that in the reverse. I can go from D to C first, and then E, and then B, and then A, and then back to D. Both of these are the same circuit, one's forward, one's backwards, and they represent the solution that I got from my sorted edges algorithm. So here's the sorted edges algorithm step by step. We sort the edges from lowest cost to highest cost. And again, as I mentioned, if two or more of those edges tie, we just pick an order for them. Just write one of them first and one of them second. And then we add edges to our circuit one at a time in order of increasing cost. So we start with the cheapest edge and then we add them in order. But we skip over any edges that would cause us to have three edges at a single vertex or that would create a circuit that doesn't include all of the vertices. And then we keep going until we have a Hamiltonian circuit. And we might get that Hamiltonian circuit before we reach the end of our list. And once again, even though this algorithm was maybe a little bit more complicated to use than the nearest neighbor algorithm, but still easier than the brute force method, we still didn't find the best solution. There's still a better solution out there that's a little bit cheaper than the one that we found. So again, that's gonna be one of the drawbacks of this method. So let's do another example. We've got this graph which shows the distance in miles between five different locations. We want to use the sorted edges algorithm to find a path that starts at C and visits every location before returning to C. Now remember, for sorted edges, the fact that they tell us to start at C doesn't really matter at first. We're going to ignore that and just use the sorted edges algorithm. And at the end, we're going to use that starting point to interpret our answer. Okay, so rather than making a complete list here, I'm just gonna look at the numbers on my graph and use the numbers in order from lowest number to highest number. So I look at all these numbers and the lowest number I see is 21, the edge from B to D. So that will be the first edge that I use in my Hamiltonian circuit. The next lowest number that I see is 23. That's the edge from A to B. So I'm gonna add that to my graph. The next number that I see, the lowest number is gonna be the 28. 
but I can't use the 28, the edge from B to E, this edge right here, because that would create three edges that all meet at B. That's one of my criteria for when I skip. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cross out that number 28 so that as I'm looking through my numbers here, trying to find the lowest number, I'm, my eyes are gonna glide over the one that I'm crossing out. So it's gonna make it a little bit easier for me to analyze here. Uh, the next lowest number that I see is 29. So that's the edge from A to E. Doesn't create any problems there. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. The next number that I see the lowest number is 30. That's the edge from A to D. But if I try to use that edge, that's going to give me a couple different problems. That's going to give me three edges that all meet at A. It's also going to create a circuit that only includes A, B, and D. So for those reasons, I have to skip over this edge. And again, I'm just going to cross out that number 30 so that as I'm looking for the cheapest numbers, I'm not going to uh, think about using that one. Next up is 34. That's the edge from A to C. But the problem is that would create three edges all meeting at A, so I can't use that one. So I'm going to cross out the number 34. Next lowest number I see is 36. Again, that would create three edges that all meet at B, so I don't want to do that. So I'm going to cross out that number 36. The next lowest number I see is 43. No problems there. So I'm going to go ahead and use that. The edge from C to E. The next lowest number that I see that I haven't used yet is 44, but the edge from E to D would create three edges all meeting at E. It would also create a circuit that only includes A, B, D, and E. It would leave out C, so I can't use that. So I'm going to cross out my 44. And then the only edge that I have left is the edge from C to D. Even though it was the most expensive edge, I had to use it here because it was the only thing that created the complete circuit that I was looking for. So now that I know that I have my complete circuit and I know my starting point is C, now I can interpret this answer by saying, okay, you start at C and I have a couple different options, one forward, one backwards. So I'm just gonna go from C to E first and now everything is in order. So C to E, E has to go to A, A would have to go to B, B would have to go to D and then back to C. But an, another completely valid answer to interpret this circuit would be instead to go from C to D and then to B and then to A, and then to E, and then back to C. And these are both the same circuit, just in reverse order. So either one of these is a correct answer. You don't have to write down both. So to summarize, here's the steps for the nearest neighbor algorithm, which we talked about in the previous lecture, and then here's the steps for the sorted edges algorithm, which we just talked about in this lecture. So different methods for solving the same problem. Again, both of them have the drawback that we are not guaranteed to find the best answer, but they are pretty simple to use and take much less time to uh, find our solution than the brute force method.